I'm Mark Halley and Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. And this is my new build. Wait, what happened to my old tank? Well, last summer on my Facebook page, which you can find right here, I left the cat out of the bag that the tank was sold. So it's gone. Done and done. Then my wife and I bought our forever home. In the new house, I knew that this bonus room slash office would be home to my new tank. There was one catch though. The bonus room was over a garage. I wanted to go big with my new tank, so I had to do some investigating on how to support the floor. First, I determined that the floor joists were going to run perpendicular to the tank. That was good news. Then I consulted a structural engineer, and he had me put up these. Six by six supporting posts and beams. As Brad says, that's some serious wood. Well, I thought I was gonna have to put up steel, but the structural engineer said no. These six by sixes support the floor joists and have more than enough capacity for the tank. And the really great thing? Well, they run in between the bays of my garage so I can still pull my cars into the garage. Wait, pull my cars into the garage? Aren't I gonna do the reef junkie thing and take over one of the bays of my garage to put in a fish room? Nope, I'm not, because I don't have to. Why not? Because I found this. Unfinished storage space. When I saw this, two words came to mind. Fish room. I've always wanted one and now I could have one and I could keep my garage for the cars and not have to pump water upstairs. Here's how this whole thing is gonna go down. This forklift is gonna pick up my new tank and it's gonna put it right up there. Most people would take the tank through the front door and then up the staircase. In my case, the tank won't even fit through the front door and there's no way I'm gonna haul it up a staircase. Therefore, well that window's gotta come out and the tank's gonna go right through it. When it comes to setting up an aquarium, one of the most important steps is you gotta make space for the tank. In my case, well, I gotta get rid of this old desk. Have at it, guys. Okay, so now I've got space for the tank. Time to move the tank upstairs. Suction cups. Don't leave home without them. What's a real tank build without a forklift? Let me tell you, it's slightly nerve-wracking seeing your brand new tank get lifted up into the air where one false move would spell disaster. Things went off when on a hitch though and the tank went in through the window just fine. Check that one off the bucket list and add it to my portfolio of builds. Of course it looked easy for me, but what did the forklift driver think of the whole thing? Well, it's something I get to do a lot, but nothing like this. Very different experience. Something else I can add to my resume of things that I have done. <laughs> but very nervous handling a very expensive fish tank and putting it up in the building like we did. Yeah, and not being kind of coordinated with the forklift, but after a while of running it, it everything kind of went okay. All right, to the tank. My new tank is a 96 by 36 by 30 Peninsula tank. Total water volume is about 450 gallons. Peninsula tank was high on my list of wants, and now I had the chance to get one. I trusted Planet Aquariums to build the tank, and it turned out great. With the tank in place, I can now focus on the fish room. In the fish room, I wanted a drain floor. So first, I put down a waterproof membrane to seal up the floor. I also wanted to have a raised floor, so I put down some aluminum bar. No worries about rust, because the bar is made of aluminum. Aluminum doesn't rust. The next step, put fiberglass grating on top of the bar. The end result is that raised and drained floor that I was looking for. The surface is also very, very rough, so if I do spill water on it, well, I'm not gonna fall and bust my tail. I could literally do a water change by just throwing water on the floor if I wanted to. I'm not gonna do it, but I do know that if I spill anything, I don't have to towel it up, I don't have to mop it up, I just leave it to evaporate. If you've been around saltwater tanks long enough, you know at some point you're gonna spill something and I've already overflowed my saltwater mixing station twice, spilled a bunch of water on the floor, and it wasn't a big deal. Fell through the grating, hit the membrane, off into the floor drain. Can't beat that. 
There you have it. There's part one of my new tank build. Now that the filtration is in place and the fish room is largely built, it's time to clean out the inside of the tank and lay down some sand. I'll catch you next time.